You know, Fortnite is a game where the best players come up with the best strategies to take home the win. You know, it's not just about who has the best gun, but who can outplay their opponent. Okay, so this just takes smarts, guys, reflexes, and just most of all, the ability to read your opponent's every single move. And so with these skills, you're gonna be always be one step ahead of the competition. So how do we achieve this level of awareness? Good question. Today, my friends, listen, we have some tips that's gonna help you read your opponent like a psychic. Listen, this is your motivation guy, the one and only Keith Allen. You know, I'm here to, to really pump you guys up. Bunch of crush on me, where you at? I hope you guys haven't given up on your dreams. I don't care if you're going through discouragement. I don't care what's ahead of you because I know about challenges. I really do. I know about obstacles, but I do know this, that every obstacle that I've ever overcome has made me a better person. So if you're going through any obstacles right now, think of it like this. It's just here to make you a better person. So whether it be from your family or whether it be from school or from work or just your personal challenges, keep going because you can become a better person. All right, let's get back into this video. Without further ado, let's get this going. So if you want to be able to reach your opponent during a fight, you're going to want to train up those observational skills. This is the same skill that you use in vibe reviewing. However, unlike watching playbacks of games that have already happened, right? Like you're going to be observing things in real time. Like you're going to need good attention for detail, especially when things moving so fast. So in a sense, the key to being a good observer is knowing what you're looking for. So the best way to do that is by improving your fighting mechanics and your building smarts. And so the more you excel at these two things, the better that you're gonna be able to identify when a player is making a similar decision. After all, like if you're good at this, then you're gonna have someone you can compare play styles with. You can ask yourself this, like if I was in this position, how would I tackle this situation? Every player is trying to make the best decision possible, so trust your instincts and just try to cut them off like wherever you feel their best option is. You know, given the time that you should also consider just really checking up on the community every now and then to just see what new strategies are floating around. This helps you anticipate what techniques are really currently really used right now and, you know, which ones are just more likely to be used each season. So if you want to be a pro, one way to get a heads up on players is using a headset, right? Like this isn't just used for hearing the game, but, you know, really paying attention to them so that you can use those tiny details that might just give you a heads up. You might hear players fighting in the distance, you know, vehicles moving around or even the clicking of weapons as an enemy tries to sneak behind you. One training strategy some pros experience when attending boot camps is learning how to tell the difference between weapon sounds. It's huge. As an example, like we could take a look at the three different assault rifles, the standard assault rifle, the combat and the burst. If you take the time to listen closely, you're going to notice that these weapons sound quite different when they're firing. But I will say this, they also make unique sounds when you're swapping weapons as well. Like the Assault has a speedy double click when pulled out. The combat has like a singular but loud click and the burst has two clicks divided by a brief pause. And so knowing the difference to these sounds can give you guys a heads up on which weapon your opponent is pulling out. So thus, you're gonna anticipate what they plan to do. And you know, even if you can't visually see them through the wall. Strategies like these are why the greatest esports teams organize their own boot camps for their players. Like it's also a great incentive for just wanting to join an organization. That level of coaching can really take someone to the next level. And luckily you can get a taste of that experience by visiting proguys.com. So click the link below and get connected with our coaches. They can give you guys the expert level training that you need to get ahead and just start your competitive career. All right, so back to strategies. Our next one can work towards giving you a better idea of what your opponents have in their inventory. While there is no actual way to see what they have until you've eliminated them, right? So, you know, there are still some subtle cues that really can help you determine if they have a good hand or if they're simply just bluffing to just, you know, see if you can do something first. Is your opponent swapping out weapons when you get closer? Like, how about when you're further away? If you're taking SMG fire from long distance, then it's possible that your opponent doesn't have an assault rifle on them or just probably ran low on ammunition. Okay, so just for safety, take a look at the standard competitive loadout. Most loadouts consist of three weapons, a utility and a healing item. The best utility at the moment for rotation is the Shockwave Cannon. While the Harpoon is also quite useful, you know, it's just mostly used for, you know, collecting floppers, which are often better than medkits. So the fire rate of the Harpoon, while great for collecting refreshes in the late game, isn't always as good when it comes to combat. As for the three weapons, usually this consists of an assault rifle for mid to long range combat, a shotgun, and so for those close quarter moments, and either a submachine gun or a sniper, depending on the preference of the player. 
So in the early game, it's just possible that the players around you have minimum ammo since they haven't had the chance to loot as much as they would in the late game. But you know, once you reach that late game, you're also gonna see a wide variety of weapons being used. So it becomes important that you understand how each one works so you know the kind of play style that it really accompanies it. For example, a player using a pump will most likely try to get up close and personal for that 200 shot. However, a player using a charged shotgun will most likely play a little slower and methodical so they can just deal some massive damage when they see an opening. Everything in competitive, guys, is about weighing your options and finding the best solution to your problem. You know, you form a strategy in your head and you just run with it. This is true about all players, no matter how skilled they are. So knowing that, you know, how does that really help us read our opponents? Well, if you can figure out exactly what options are available at any given point, you can narrow down what your opponent may be thinking. Like if you're out in an empty field, surrounded by a few trees, when you encounter an opponent, they have some options. Like they can try to find some cover either by building or by just dashing behind a tree. Another option is, you know, they're gonna try to W key you by aggressively just taking you out. This can mean that they start building in an attempt to get you to play along in this build battle. In the event of a box fight, whoever is on the outside is going to be focusing on penetrating the box in some way, usually by taking control of the wall and editing it. In most cases, once the player on the outside manages to claim a wall, the player on the inside of the box will have to react to the imminent opening. So they're gonna most likely try to get into a corner depending on what edit they anticipate you making. In some cases, they might even try to gain high ground or edit away into a roof. So different POIs offer new routes for where the fight can go. For example, their crash sites have the slip streams and the launch pads, which really can provide a quick escape. Your fight takes you too close to them, then your opponent has the option of making it to the stream when their health gets to low. This is gonna give them time to just patch up and reorganize. Another example would be, okay, if you enter a fight within a building, the tight spaces will limit how high you are up able to build and really could force the two of you into some low ground combat. Here, and I mean like right here, cornering your opponent into a wall would be a good option, so they might attempt some peace control to prevent you from implementing that strategy. If you're interested in taking a deep dive into these skills, guys, feel free to check out some coaching opportunities from Pro Guides. All right, so one thing that we cannot stress enough is paying attention to their building patterns. Are they making like coherent builds or just spamming whenever they can? If they're spamming builds all over the place, then one or two things are happening. Either they aren't fully trained and at building and really wanna just look intimidating, or they're panicking. <laughs> Both are good for you since the panic player won't be thinking completely straight. So if they're in fact like panic building, you could just sit back, relax, eat some bunch of crunch if you want. <laughs> I know I would. And just let them box themselves in. You know, they might not have intended that, but you know, odds are they don't know where any of their builds are positioned and therefore don't have much control over the situation. Usually players panic when they are just ill-equipped or you've managed to take down their health from the first few shots. Now, if they boxed up in response to getting hit, then odds are they are trying for some defense while they heal their wounds. So considering this action can take anywhere between five to 10 seconds, make sure to keep a close eye on them so you know what healing items they're attempting to use. And this is gonna let you know how much time that you have before they can focus completely on fighting you again. So anticipating edits is all about watching your opponent and just seeing how far they are from the builds. So, you know, one tell is, is like when they're starting getting closer to their builds, this usually indicates that they wanna make an edit. I mean, after all, there is a minimum distance you must keep if you wanna do edits, right? This can be tricky though. Like if your enemy is behind a build, structures can offer cover from fire, but they, you know, they also make it harder to see an opponent as well. So you can solve this guys by damaging structures, which should give you small openings where you can just get a better glimpse at what they're up to. Players are often gonna hide behind walls and just wait for you to bring them down. Here, they might anticipate that you're going to use your pickaxe and in response, ready up their pump. In other cases, they can even see that you intend to punch through with heavy fire, so they can just prepare to keep rebuilding until you get tired of just wasting bullets. But keep in mind, my friends, just like you read your opponent, your opponent is reading you. You know, sometimes what you need to really read your opponent is just knowing the difference between play styles and how that affects decision making. For example, like you have those W keyers, right? The end gamers and your survivalists who are just trying to avoid getting eliminated too early. And if a player is trying to survive to the end game, then they're just are gonna be stocking up all the best loot and ammunition. And so if they get into a fight, they're gonna do their best to take you down, but their main goal is really to reach the late game where their strategies really start to pay off. 
On the other hand, a W Kier will play aggressively, so their goal at the time of encountering you won't be to run away. These players are going all in on elimination points, so it's just expect them to just try to push you with high fire rate weapons and aggressive builds. So knowing the difference between them can really help you identify what kind of player that you're dealing with and really how to counter them. Bunch of so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Do you think you can read your opponents a bit easier? I hope so. Listen, you stay up to date with all the latest, greatest tricks that we have for you guys. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, like the video, and just keep going. Do not give up on what is on the inside of you because what you have on the inside of you is greatness. Once again, this is your motivation guide. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.